Hello, hello. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing super well today. It is Monday, May 15th. How the time flies. Um, we're halfway through the month already, and we haven't done anything this whole month. The market's been pretty stable. I think that that chop does continue throughout uh, May. There are a lot of I think the market's in limbo, doesn't really know where to turn just yet. I think there could be a little pullback this week, and that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so we'll break that down. The main um, news that is making headlines, I believe, is the continued uh, concerns over regional banks. Uh, they're pushing regulators into uh, areas they don't necessarily want to be, right? Even big banks are kind of pushing regulators to do so and allowing the largest U.S. banks to get even larger. So other things uh, that have been invoked are systemic risk exceptions, which allow the FDIC to guarantee banks uninsured deposits. And there are now even proposals for blanket deposit guarantees. The fear in this situation could spiral if left unchecked and the traditional policies can be overlooked to stamp out the crisis, right? Um, which a lot of like the overall uh, FDIC, uh, SEC, other regulators and the Fed are really propelling to uh, sustain this from really exploding by providing liquidity pretty much. And we also have... Um, just looking into the abyss because I'm trying to think right now. We also have the the issue with the uh, um, uh, debt limit, right? The debt ceiling limit, which uh, has not yet been resolved, right? It's it's a huge thing that that does uh, time is running out that does need to be resolved. Another topic of discussion has been uh, centered around the short selling of bank stocks, right? A lot of I know a lot of people personally that have been short uh, SVIB. Uh, other names, right? Uh, Credit Suisse for a very long time and really, really doing well on those moves. Now, under the strategy, investors borrow those shares with the uh, ex expectation that the price will naturally drop. And if it goes well, they buy back the shares for a profit at a lower price. In September 2008, the SEC temporarily banned short sales, primarily in financial stocks, in an attempt to protect companies and stabilize the market. But this time around, regulatory intervention might be even more controversial we haven't necessarily seen a cataclysmic black swan event and a lot of uh, regulators or government and uh, big banks are pushing for uh, the ceasefire of short selling so the economic outlook is already looking fairly uncertain given things that uh, uh, given things like the U.S.'s debt ceiling crisis the falling commercial real estate values uh, stress on U.S. banks could be one of those defining catalysts that does manage to push the economy overboard. Now, a lot of people um, and a lot of everyone, economists, analysts, everyone is preparing for a 2023 recession. A lot of stocks are still in bear market territory. Recession has been the case for quite some time, but I think they're expecting more of a pullback. And the effects of the Federal Reserve, usually the hiking cycle and the tightening policy is felt 12 to 15 months after that, uh, the start of those things. So this is when, theoretically, we should start feeling those effects and the market should start reflecting those effects. So we'll see how the next few months progress with that, right? So uh, we also have... Um, Arguments that continued stock plunges have real world, of, real world, real world effects, like spooking depositors and prompting bank runs. And the U.S. Federal Reserve and state officials are also looking into whether market manipulation has prompted the recent volatility. Well, recent volatility in bank names, I should say. So, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon has said that regulators should look into banning short selling of stocks on bank stocks specifically. So the short selling ban in 2008 only lasted about three weeks, and many have argued that uh, the restrictions were not only unnecessary, but actually harmed the market quality and stability. So these impacts cited uh, are liquidity and pricing efficiencies, while short sellers can use other instruments like futures, options, and swaps to get around the ban, naturally. Um, many also contended that Shorts balance the market ecosystem by shining a spotlight on companies that deserve more scrutiny, while economists from Goldman Sachs have argued that such drastic moves on bank shares look like an unlikely move in this scenario. So overall, 
that's the main thing, the main topic of conversation that, that we uh, do want to look at today uh, to start off the week in terms of central banking. Um, Philip Jefferson, uh, he served as a board governor since 2022, so not very long. He's officially been nominated as the vice chair for the Federal Reserve. Jefferson, a former Fed economist and vice president for academic affairs at Davidson College, would replace uh, Lael Brainerd, who left the number two role at the central bank to head up uh, the National Economic Council. So in the vice chair role, Jefferson would help shape the agenda for rate setting meetings and has been known to ascribe equal importance to Fed's dual mandate, even in the era of high inflation. So Biden has also announced that he will nominate Lisa Cook for an additional full term as a member of the Fed's board of governors while nominating Adriana Kugler, a U.S. executive director at the World Bank for the empty seat. So. Again, a few little Fed things. I think uh, Jerome Powell does speak this Friday. There are probably going to be some Fed speakers throughout the week. In terms of news, we have Bostich uh, that should be speaking right now. Kashkari is going to start at 9.15, very, very close. Uh, Barkin is going to – a lot of Fed speakers today, actually. Barkin starts at 12.30, so that's one thing that you do have to take a look at. A lot of Fed speakers today and this week. But if we take a look at the market, overall the market uh, slumped a little here pre – or. Over the last 30 minutes, right, we've been up uh, from the overnight session, from Sunday's session. We're now slumping. There's a P-shaped profile on the S&P 500 futures as well as the NASDAQ futures. This week, at the start of the week, I'm going to be looking for a little more downside to get an actual pullback. My target is 401 on the SPY, um, like 4025-ish on the futures, something like that. Uh, I want to see if the 5052 region on the S&P 500 futures, 4150, 4152, holds out as a key resistance. There are some single prints there. I want to see if that area can get reoffered here early in the morning and get a push to the downside back into Friday's lows. Uh, last Friday, I was a little more bullish into the morning session. I talked about under 39, you cannot be a bull, and right, that thing kind of broke out. Into the end of the day, that was a rally, right? That's something else. But overall, under 39, uh, 40, that area held twice as resistance, prompting a 30-point sell-off. But there were some areas to pick up five, six points from last Friday, right? I didn't want to be too biased, but that's that's what the that's what the charts were looking like to me. Again, same thing today. I do want to lean a little more bearish, especially under 39 to 42, 41, 39 to 41, 42, that three-point region. If that gets reoffered aggressively on the S&P 100 futures, I think there's going to be a decent downturn that, that propels the downside. That's a huge pivot you all have to watch out for. And I'm going to be looking for initial maybe reoffers at 50 to 52 on the futures. The bulls need above 63. If they cannot rebid the 63 in the first hour of the session, I think that the the uh, early week weakness starts today. So with that being said, um, I want to tell you guys all this Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um we're going to be doing a Q&A, a live Q&A to talk about not only summer trading the futures markets, because you can see it's been very dull. Um, however, uh, at Trade Pro Academy, we're doing very well with this dull market. Uh, multiple, multiple handles given out on a daily basis. But not only talking about the summer markets, but I'm going to be talking to you guys about a um, strategy that we are going to present at Trade Pro Academy at the end of May right, that covers all market conditions for futures trading with a few simple uh, tools that we use and very, very basic tools. I'm going to show you guys what they are and how to actually use them. So if you're going to um, be around on Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, check out community.tradeproacademy.com, right, to get access to that Q&A. Uh, be there. We're going to be talking about it throughout the week. I'm going to talk about it in other updates as well. So I hope to see you guys there. Bring your questions. I'll bring the answers and let's have a good time. Last time we did a Q&A, it was super engaging. I really, really appreciated everyone's commentary and everyone's input in that. So I was very happy with that. Let's bring the same energy to this Q&A and I hope to speak to all you guys. Ask me anything and we'll go through it. Um, got a few questions here before we run away. With all the traveling... I can't read. With all the traveling, with all, with you doing all your traveling, you do still have a home in Toronto, or did you? No, I do. Yeah, I have a, I have a place in Toronto still. I'm just renting it out. Um, yeah. 
you have any more questions, bring them over on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow morning as well. And I'll see you guys in our trading room. Check us out and have a happy Monday. Start small, start light. And let's see where this, the start of the week takes us. Thank you all. And we'll open up our trading room now.